Hi, this is Jeff West with Oracle. I'd like to give you an overview and a demo of an advanced feature in WebLogic for JMS called Unit of Work. The Unit of Work feature allows you to configure a JMS destination to deliver JMS messages containing the same Unit of Work ID in a single batch to a single consumer. Unit of Work ensures that messages are processed in order and only if the complete set has been generated and received. The messages in a unit of work batch will be delivered to a consumer only after all messages identified for the unit of work are available to be delivered. In addition, the messages will be reordered in the sequence that they are generated by the producer. In the case of a distributed destination, messages that are sent to the distributed destination members will be forwarded to the single member where the message batch will be made available for consumption. This is done without altering the message contents or its sequence in the batch. For cases where an incomplete unit of work is generated, you can configure an error destination where messages will be redirected after a timeout period. This allows you to not lose messages and keep track of units of work that are not formed properly. You can also configure MDBs on this queue that can take an automatic action of notifying an administrator in the case of an incomplete batch. For the demo, I will first show you how to enable unit of work for a JMS destination using the WebLogic Admin Console. Then I will cover the code that's used by the message producer to enable the unit of work. For the live demo, I will first show you the example that sends messages without unit of work enabled. Then I will use the method in the producer that sends a complete unit of work and we will see that being delivered in one batch. Finally, I will show you an example where an incomplete unit of work is sent and redirected to an error destination after a timeout period. Let's start with the demo. First, I'll log into the WebLogic Admin Console. The configuration that I have running is a cluster with two managed servers, and each managed server has a JMS server associated with it. Next, I'll go ahead and create a JMS module that I'll use to hold my connection factory and distributed destination uh, that I'll be using for unit of work. Next, I'll create two distributed queues. The first queue will be the primary queue that we use for unit of work, and the second queue will be the error destination, where messages will get redirected in the case of an incomplete unit of work. Next, I'm going to disable server affinity on the connection factory. Next, we'll configure our distributed queue to enable unit of work. There are two options for the unit of work message handling policy. The first is pass through, which ignores unit of work, and the second is single message delivery. I'll choose single message delivery to enable unit of work. Next, I'll set the expiration time for incomplete unit of work messages. This is the timeout period after which the delivery of the message is considered failed. Next, we need to configure the delivery failure option. In this case, we'll configure it to an expiration policy of redirect. Then we'll choose the error destination of the error queue that was created for this JMS module. Next, let's take a look at the code that I'm using to generate the messages for the unit of work demo. I've implemented a main method and I can pass in a command line parameter to send different types of messages. I can send in a normal non-unit of work set of messages or a discrete unit of work in a fast or slow timing setup. Uh, and I can send incomplete units of work either with or without a transacted session. So let's take a look at the send unit of work code. 
I've implemented this method so I can use a parameter to choose to use a transaction or regular session. Here I'm generating a unique ID for the unit of work. And then here you'll see the code that begins, uh, the lines of code that are used to enable the unit of work functionality. First, I have to specify the unit of work, and it's best to use a unique generated ID for this. Next, for each iteration through a loop uh, for the message, I need to set the sequence number for that message. Then finally, if it's the last message in the unit of work, I need to set a Boolean property to say this is the last message and therefore the unit of work is over. When I send an incomplete unit of work, you'll notice that uh, in the same way I generate a unique ID for the unit of work and then set it and then set the sequence number for each message. However, in this case, I've commented out the line of code where it sets the last unit of work or is unit of work in parameter. For the non-unit of work messages, you can see that I'm simply creating a text message with no properties and sending it using a producer. I'm not setting any of the unit of work uh, properties. So let's get started with a demo. First, I'm going to send in a normal batch of messages that's not using unit of work. We can see here that the messages are being load balanced across the two servers in the cluster. Next, I'll send one discrete unit of work. Here we can see that the messages are delivered in a batch and they're delivered to server number two. Next, I'll send another discrete unit of work, but I'll send it slower so we can see that the message batch is not delivered until the last message in the unit of work is delivered. Before I send the last message, I wait for a little bit so we can see that the messages are sitting there and then send the 15th message and now you can see all the messages are delivered in that single batch. Next I'm going to send a discrete unit of work and I'm going to use the slow timer and we'll take a look at the JMS server monitoring so we can see the messages are in a pending state. So in this case they're actually being delivered on server number two. So we'll take a look at that. And here we can see that there's 10 messages in a pending state. And, the message, and it will go up until 14. And then after the 15th message is delivered, we'll see it delivered on the right side in server number two. Next, I'm going to send a larger discrete unit of work with a longer wait time between sending each message. In this case, we will see the messages fail to be delivered and get redirected to the error queue. So in a couple of seconds, we should see the messages be identified as failed and show up on the right side in server two. Yep, so there we go. So in this case, it took the messages longer than 30 seconds, or I guess the unit of work batch longer than 30 seconds to be completed. So messages up to message number 20 were identified as timed out. Next, I'll send an incomplete unit of work, which will also time out, and we'll see it fail to be delivered. So in this case, I'm not setting the unit of work in flag on the last message. So after about 30 seconds from the time the first message was delivered, we should see these time out and fail to be delivered. Just a few seconds more. 
And there we go. We can see on the left side that they failed to be delivered and they were redirected to the error queue on server number one. So hopefully this was valuable. If there's anything else that you'd like us to show or discuss, please let us know. You can reach us by sending a direct message to WebLogic devs or tweet a message including hashtag WebLogic uh, and we'll be listening.